Today, we will talk about the radio altimeter, which, although not considered a basic flight instrument, can be found in many aircraft. A radio altimeter, also known as radar altimeter, and abbreviated as RA, is an instrument that indicates the height of the aircraft in relation to the ground immediately below it. In other words, it indicates the AGL height of the aircraft in real time. Now, the basic components of a radio altimeter system are two antennas located at the bottom of the fuselage, one transmitting and the other receiving a central processing unit, and finally, the instrument or indicator in the cockpit. Let's now see how the system works. First, the transmitting antenna emits a radio wave downward from the aircraft. When this wave reaches the surface, it bounces back to the aircraft and is received by the receiving antenna. Then, the processing unit calculates the time it took for the wave to go and return. And since we know that radio waves travel at a known speed, which is the speed of light, then the system can calculate the current height of the aircraft above ground level. Now, although this is the basic principle of operation, modern radio altimeters actually work in a slightly different way. Since they use a frequency modulated continuous wave system. Let's see how it works. Here, the signal emitted by the transmitting antenna changes its frequency continuously, within the range of 4200 and 4400 MHz. With this system, the elapsed time is not measured directly, but the difference in the frequency of the wave, or in other words, the phase shift. And since the rate at which the wave changes frequency is known, the time it takes for the wave to go and return can be determined indirectly. So far this may sound a bit complex, but let's take a look at an example to make it clearer. Let's suppose that in this case, the transmitting antenna emits a radio wave with a frequency of 4300 MHz. This wave reaches the surface, bounces back to the aircraft, and is received by the receiving antenna. However, by the time this antenna receives this wave, the transmitting antenna is already emitting another wave with a different frequency, in this case 4350 MHz. What the system does is compare the frequency of the received wave with the frequency of the wave that is being emitted. The difference in frequency between these two waves allows the system to calculate the time it took for the wave to go and return, and therefore also calculate the current height of the aircraft above ground level. Now, as we have already mentioned, these waves travel at the speed of light, so this process occurs almost instantaneously, several times per second, making the system highly accurate and reliable. Let's now see some important considerations regarding this system. One of them is the residual height. The thing is that, the height shown on the instrument does not correspond to the distance between the antenna and the ground, as we might think. This is because in practice, the objective is for the radio altimeter to indicate zero feet when the main landing gear touches down on the runway during landing. Therefore, the system is calibrated to show the height between the main landing gear and the ground. So the difference in height between the antenna and the landing gear is known as residual height, as we can see here. Now, there are some aircrafts that may have different residual heights depending on the design of the landing gear. For example, the Boeing 747. In this case, the main landing gear is tilted during the approach, giving as a result a relatively high residual height. However, when the plane lands, the main landing gear is compressed, causing the residual height to decrease considerably. Therefore, since the radio altimeter is calibrated with the residual height of the approach, it may show negative values when on the ground. Apart from this, there are some other considerations to take into account when using the radio altimeter. For example, when flying over irregular terrain, the radio altimeter indication may vary considerably. In this case, this aircraft is flying leveled at a constant altitude. However, the height above the ground indicated by the radio altimeter is constantly changing because of the irregularities of the terrain. Even if the aircraft is descending, the radio altimeter indication may occasionally increase. For example here, this aircraft is approaching to land, let's say that at this point it is at 1000 feet above the ground. Initially, when the plane flies over this mountain, the radio altimeter indication decreases to 400 feet. 
but then it flies over a valley where the indication increases to 500 feet despite the fact that the aircraft was actually descending. Therefore we can say that the radio altimeter indication will only be constant and predictable over flat terrain. Having seen how it works and the general considerations, let's look at the parts of the instrument. Here we have a typical analog radio altimeter. Here we can find the height scale, which normally is expressed in terms of hundreds of feet. We have the needle that indicates the current height, an adjustable height reference, a height selection knob, and an altitude warning light. Apart from this, some analog radio altimeters also incorporate a red flag, which is visible when the instrument is inoperative or when the signal has too much interference, thus indicating that the instrument must not be used. With this in mind, let's now see how to read this instrument. The scale of the instrument usually goes up to 2,500 feet. So for example in this case, it would be indicating a height of 1,000 feet. In this other position it would be indicating 2,500 feet. Here 500 feet. And here 250 feet. Normally when flying above 2,500 feet above the ground, the needle will not be visible, or it will return to the zero feet indication. This will depend on the manufacturer and model, as this instrument has many variants, both analog and digital. Now, the radio altimeter is a very useful reference for the crew when flying at low altitude. However, it also has other applications in certain procedures or situations, such as in instrument approaches. For example, here we have an ILS Category 1 procedure. In this case, the minimums are specified in terms of altitude in relation to mean sea level, that's why it is called decision altitude. This implies that using a barometric altimeter, when the aircraft reaches 4,220 feet during the procedure, the crew must decide whether to continue the landing or perform a missed approach. So as we could see, in CAT-1 approaches, a radio altimeter is not required since they can be performed using a regular barometric altimeter. However, in Category 2 and 3 approaches, the minimums are specified in terms of radio altitude, which means that instead of having a decision altitude expressed in relation to mean sea level, there is a decision height expressed in relation to the ground. In this particular procedure, when the aircraft reaches 144 feet indicated in the radio altimeter, the crew must decide whether to continue the landing or perform a missed approach. Now, to identify more easily on the radio altimeter the exact decision height, the crew can use the height selection knob and the reference mark. In this case, the pilot would adjust the decision height of the procedure using the height selection knob. For example, let's say that the decision height to be used is 300 feet. Then the pilot adjusts the reference height accordingly. Now, when the needle reaches the reference mark, the warning light will illuminate, and it can be accompanied by a call-out like this. Minimums. Minimums. Indicating to the crew that it is at this point that they must decide whether or not to continue the approach. And this leads us to the following system that makes use of the radio altimeter, which are the radio altimeter callouts. Most modern aircraft incorporate automatic radio altimeter callouts, which are part of the Ground Proximity Warning System, or GPWS. This system emits callouts at certain heights in relation to the ground, such as the following. 2500 1000 500, 400, 300, 200, 100, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. The main objective of these is to indicate to the pilot the current height of the aircraft above the ground without the need to look directly at the radio altimeter. Since during an approach, normally the pilot's attention is focused on other parameters. Now, apart from these callouts, there might be others such as these. Approaching minimums, 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 which are directly related to the decision height selected by the pilot. Now, this ground proximity warning system also uses the radio altimeter as a reference to issue certain ground proximity and or aircraft configuration warnings. 
For example, let's say this aircraft is approaching to land, but the crew forgets to extend the flaps and the landing gear. In this case, when the aircraft descends below a certain height above ground level, the GPWS will issue callouts like these. Too low, flaps. Too low, gear. Too low, terrain. Pull up. Another system that relies in part on the radio altimeter is the automatic landing system, known as auto land. In this case, initially the aircraft uses the glide slope to descend in the correct approach path. However, from a certain height above the ground, the system stops using the glide slope and uses only the information from the radio altimeter to complete the landing. Now, although the radio altimeter is quite accurate and reliable, it has certain limitations. One of them is that, since the waves are emitted downward in relation to the fuselage, there are certain pitch and bank limits. Here for example, during normal maneuvers, the radio altimeter can determine correctly the height of the aircraft. However, if the pitch or bank limits are exceeded, then the waves emitted by the system are not able to determine the current height of the aircraft, so there will be an error in the indication. Typically, the pitch limit is around 30 degrees, and the bank limit is around 60 degrees, but this will vary depending on the design of the system. Another problem is that, when flying near antennas, or when having devices on board, that use the same frequency band of the radio altimeter, they may interfere with the system. A clear example of this is the 5G mobile network, which uses part of the frequency band of the radio altimeters. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.